When was the last time that you forgave somebody? For me, I've had to forgive my brother every day during this isolation as he's been eating all the food in our fridge, which is clearly labelled as mine. Maybe you have a similar problem in your house. But on a more serious note, it can be very difficult for us to forgive people, especially people who hurt us, who abuse our trust, who said that thing or did that thing that we never thought that person would say or do. And why should we forgive them? Well, you see, we might have to think about it the other way around. When was the last time that you had to ask for forgiveness? How easy is it for us to say that hurtful thing, to abuse somebody's trust, to say that thing or do that thing that nobody ever thought that you or I would ever do? One of Jesus' disciples, Peter, learned all too well how easy it is to say or do that thing that no one around him, and especially he himself, thought that he would do. You see, Jesus knew that he was going to die, and he was explaining to his disciples that he would have to leave them. Peter jumped in so quickly with a response, and he said, Lord, I would give up my life for you. Peter was so confident that he would stand up for Jesus, that he said he was willing to die for him. We read in John chapter 18 that when Jesus was arrested, Peter did what any good friend would do. He followed along behind Jesus and the soldiers, watching and waiting to see what was going to happen to his friend. But while Peter was waiting outside the trial, he was asked about his connections to Jesus. Firstly, by a servant girl. You're one of his disciples, aren't you? No, I'm not. Then by a group around a fire, you know Jesus, don't you? No, I do not know him. Finally, by one of the high priest servants, didn't I see you with Jesus earlier? No, I do not know this man. Imagine how Jesus must have felt, knowing that one of his closest friends denied that he ever even knew him. If that happened to me, I would be feeling hurt and I wouldn't ever want to see or probably speak to that person ever again. And imagine how Peter must have been feeling, guilty, disappointed at himself, desperate to try and make amends with his friend who he loved and cared about, wondering to himself, would he ever get the opportunity to speak to Jesus again? Peter had to watch as Jesus was led away to be crucified as he died on the cross, as his body was put inside a tomb, not knowing what was going to happen. I wonder, did Peter realise that Jesus was dying for him? You see, last week we heard about the hope that was available for the thief on the cross, about the hope that each of us can have, the hope of forgiveness. Peter maybe didn't realise it yet, but the same hope of forgiveness would be available to him as well. You see, Jesus rose from the dead and he went to see his disciples who had gone back to their old ways of fishing. When Peter realised that Jesus was standing at the shore, he jumped out of the boat. He swam to the shore to see his saviour. We read in John chapter 21 verses 15 to 17 what happened next. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Peter had denied Jesus three times. But here we see that three times Jesus asks Peter the question, do you love me? Peter's response shows us that he was seeking forgiveness. He truly loved Jesus and he wanted their relationship to be restored. Jesus does not disown Peter. 
Jesus does not say, I do not know you. Jesus does not say, you can no longer be my disciple. But Jesus does completely forgive Peter. The reality is we all mess up. None of us can be that perfect friend, the perfect son or daughter, or the perfect pupil. We are all going to have to ask for forgiveness. Whenever we forget about that thing our parents asked us to do, when we say that thing that is hurtful to our friends, or when I hold a grudge against my brother for eating all the food that is in our fridge. Peter was not a perfect friend, but he found forgiveness. Forgiveness from the one person who ever lived who was perfect, who didn't mess up, who didn't hold grudges, who didn't disobey his parents. Jesus, the perfect, innocent son of God, died on a cross so that his friend Peter, so that I, so that anyone who chooses to be his friend can be forgiven. And Peter gave his life to Jesus, trying every day to serve him. How are we going to respond to the forgiveness that Jesus offers to us? And if we have been forgiven by Jesus for the times that we mess up, how should we respond to others when they hurt us? Our answer can be found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, where it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Peter found true forgiveness and we can too.